Hey guys, this is Shreyas and welcome back to another video. So this was one of the most requested video after I posted my unboxing for the OnePlus 9 Pro and even after I posted the review of the OnePlus 9 Pro. By the way, it should pop up in a card right now or else I'll make sure to drop a link in the description below. Do check out my review of the OnePlus 9 Pro. Also, I'm hosting a small giveaway in that particular video. So check it out to know the details about the same. Uh, a lot of people do have the budget to stretch till the 9 Pro and uh, 9 Pro got a lot of flack, especially because of the Hasselblad hype and the cameras not being up to the mark. Uh, if you do have this budget to stretch, is it wise currently to spend on the 9 Pro or not? And that's why this comparison is important. Also, if you're wondering where I got this really premium leather looking back for my OnePlus 9 Pro, it's actually from Gadget Shields and they have a good collection of skins for multiple phones and devices actually you should definitely check them out in the link in the description below and definitely use my coupon code tto10 for 10 percent discount with that said without any further ado let's get into the comparison of the oneplus 9 pro with the oneplus 8 pro so this is stress and let's check that out All right, let's talk about the design and build quality. So the first major difference is about the back panel and how it looks and the camera bump. So if I have mentioned it in my OnePlus 9 Pro review as well, I'm very much happy with the uh, design of this particular phone. The camera hump is not as much as the 8 Pro was and it rocks way less on the table and it's tolerable in the 9 Pro, in my opinion. The curves in the edges of the screen on the 9 Pro has been reduced by a lot compared to the 8 Pro. So accidental touches are almost not present. One more uh, thing which is surprising but still is good in my opinion is that the screen size and the overall size of the phone has reduced a bit on the 9 Pro as well which makes it a bit more ergonomic and easy to hold compared to the 8 Pro. So overall in the design department it's kind of subjective but overall if, uh, if you have to look at ergonomics, practicality etc I think the 9 Pro is a good step up from the 8 Pro. Moving on is the display. Now, as I mentioned, the display size has reduced and the curves are way more subtle in the 9 Pro. Apart from that, uh, 9 Pro was about the media hype around a lot of display issues like black crush, green tint, hole punch banding, etc., which are completely absent on the 9 Pro and that's great news. Honestly speaking, I was really surprised and I mentioned it even in my 9 Pro review that the black crush I observed in multiple videos is not there at all. What does help is the variable refresh rate and uh, that is something contributes to the battery per, uh, performance of this particular phone which I will visit to in the later part of the video. So overall the display is a good step up in terms of the 9 Pro not facing any of the issues that the 8 Pro faced and that's a thumbs up from my end. Alright, the haptics on the 8 Pro were really good but I feel that the 9 Pro has topped it up by a small margin, not by much but still it has. I have displayed uh, very well that how the haptics even are inculcated into things like vibration while sliding the brightness and the volume sliders. Here's a preview for the same by the way. So this is absent on the 8 Pro, but I still feel the haptics on the 8 Pro are great. But yeah, the 9 Pro is slightly better in my experience. The call reception on both the phones are pretty good. I have used voice over Wi-Fi in Airtel over the whole period of time. I have used the 8 Pro and similar performance over here. The earpiece speaker on the 9 Pro is a bit better than the 8 Pro in my experience. So what has improved over the 8 Pro is the stereo separation and the overall volume. The vo maximum volume on the 9 Pro is a slightly higher than the 8 Pro, but that should not be the only reason you go for the 9 Pro to be honest. All right, now about the performance. So if you want to know about day-to-day -day performance, I have made a speed test and you should check it out. It should pop up in the cart right now and obviously will be linked down in the description below. But overall day-to-day -day performance is top-notch on both. The problem which I faced on the 9 Pro, which is kind of gone, is about the RAM management. The RAM management is not great. But this was also present at the 8 Pro when I got it initially, but it was ironed out via software updates. I'm hoping for the same about 9 Pro, but we'll find it out probably in the long term review. So stay subscribed to the channel for that. The, apart from that, the good part about this is that you have a certain amount of idea about how the experience with the Snapdragon 870 will be there on the 9R because the 865 is technically the 870 as well, which is 
found in the OnePlus 9R. So you can probably think about if you have uh, budget constraints, that should be an indicator just about the performance. Apart from that, the Snapdragon 888 is a 5 nanometer process and is very powerful. Honestly, it's power hungry as well and was warming up the phone uh, considerably even while doing light tasks. But that has been ironed out via software updates which I have covered in my full review. So check that out. Uh, and just to understand the heating issue or something like that, I ran the 3D Mark test on Loop. What I noticed was the 8 Pro got way warmer than the 9 Pro after the same number of loops and uh, i feel the thermal management has become a lot better on the 9 pro after the 11.2.3.3 update so that's something to consider and oneplus has acknowledged this and on the forums they specified that they're bringing out another update to make it even better so that's something to look out for but i will definitely cover it later when i revisit the oneplus 9 pro for a long term review all right the next thing is battery and charging now the battery life on the 8 pro wasn't great it was in the level of flagships which is you know over five hours usually but uh, the 9 pro was struggling to do so initially especially with qhd plus resolution and 120 hertz refresh rate although it does have a ltpo panel with possibly uh, changing the refresh rate to probably save battery i did not see a great battery performance but with the consecutive updates and probably the system learning my usage patterns it did uh, improve a lot but when i changed it back down to fsd plus both of the phones oneplus 9 pro gave me constantly around six hours of screen on time or more and that's a good thing i feel although i my usage did not cover gaming in any way the oneplus 8 pro is also around the same ballpark but where the story changes is about charging now the oneplus 8 pro came with a 30 watt watt charger which is proprietary the 9 pro comes with a 65 watt pd charger and the good part is you can use other pd chargers to fast charge it as well if you have 45 or 65 watt pd chargers but that is not there on the 8 pro i faced this difficulty when i traveled back home it was charging extremely slow even via my 65 watt pd charger so that's the thing you need to consider so there is an accessory uh, with the 9 pro that enables 50 watt wireless charging for the 9 pro as well but unfortunately that's not being sold in india currently so i use the 30 watt uh, charger that came with the 8 pro both of them actually have similar charging times in that case yeah they are not battery champs by any means and you should keep a note on the battery but if you do regular social media as browsing calls etc with a mix of mobile data and wi-fi you'll get around five and a half to six hours of screen on time at least on fsd plus resolution all right now the final the most important part which probably you guys have been waiting for are the cameras here are some sa camera samples side by side i'll describe whatever i have observed and you let me know in the comments down below what you feel and if the cameras are a worthy upgrade in the 9 pro or not so this is from the wide angle lens of both the phones which is the primary uh, lens the greens in the oneplus 8 pro is a bit off and it's too warm according to me the picture also the oneplus 8 pro is slightly overexposed according to me because some highlight details is being uh, clipped off whereas the 9 pro gets a better exposure it's not perfect uh, the shadow details is a bit more missing because the exposure is lower and both of these actually struggle with the shadow details over here switching to the ultra wide angle lens the field of view of the 9 pro is a bit more than the 8 pro the color consistency is good on the 9 pro it's very similar on the 8 pro as well but i do not like the picture and the colors primarily on the 8 pro the 8 pro is overexposing by a little bit and the greens aren't accurate according to me moving on to this nighttime shot this was by the primary lens of both the phones and it was taken in the night mode as well at first look the 8 pro looks good but when i zoomed in i noticed that the details in the tree in the background is almost missing not just that there is a bit of a light smearing and trust me i double checked about the lens if it was clean or not and it was I retook the shot and still that lens flaring was happening near the lights in the middle of the scene. On the 9 Pro it's controlled very well. The sharpness in the text on the board is also more on the 9 Pro according to me. One more important thing is that the nightscape capturing time is way lower on the 9 Pro which makes it easier and neglect and chances of movement and blur decreases because of that. 
Also, if you move on to the next picture, which is also similar in the first picture, first of all, the sky comes completely black, which is good at night time. This was taken by the ultra wide, by the way, where I struggled with the 8 Pro because the capture time was very high. Now, 9 Pro has a higher aperture because of which the capture time reduces by a lot. Also, the sensor size is a lot larger, so it helps in faster gathering of lights. You can see the pots in the right hand side corner, they are way sharper on the 9 Pro because probably of the hand movement and on the 8 Pro it's a bit blurred and not that sharp. Rest all, the picture looks pretty nice to me, no issues as such, but the sharpness in the edges is what I give the 9 Pro props for. Moving on, these are some daytime shots. The 8 Pro looks okay and so does the 9 Pro. The 9 Pro looks a bit cool over here compared to the 8 Pro especially. But right when I switch to the ultra wide, there is a huge color shift on the 8 Pro which is not the case on the 9 Pro. Now the 9 Pro still might not show exactly accurate colors because it's leaning a bit towards the cooler side and the 8 Pro is a bit too warm according to the scene that was at the moment I clicked it. But the color consistency and the exposure is way better on the 9 Pro wide and ultra wide compared to that of the 8 Pro. One thing that bothers me about the 8 Pro over here is obviously slightly on the left side if you see the greens it's a bit off and the blues is just boosted out of proportion on the plastic covering on the tin sheds if you see in the middle of the scene that is very accurately captured on the 9 pro again on the 9 pro the field of view is more compared to the 8 pro as well also the 8 pro overexposes if you see the tallest building in the scene the highlights are getting clipped slightly over there whereas the 9 pro gets the exposure right according to me switching to the ultra wide the color consistency again is way better on the 9 pro compared to the 8 pro the blues are still off in the 8 pro and the rest of the story kind of remains the same the 8 pro has a slightly higher exposure than the 9 pro over here but i don't think it's overexposing in this particular scene moving to telephone Photo shots this is the telephoto of both of them individually 3x for the 8 pro and 3.3x apparently for the 9 pro i do not personally see a focal length difference over here also the same story continues the 8 pro tends to overexpose a bit if you see the white flowers and the 9 pro does not overexpose and kind of underexposes in this particular picture shadow details are lower in the 9 pro but i feel that it is way more editable in the 9 pro and details i don't think either of them are doing a good job because both are 8 megapixel sensors this was clicked by the ultra wide of both the lenses again the sharpness is a bit more in the 9 pro shadow details both are struggling and i think the 8 pro does a slightly better job in maintaining shadow details but the colors are a bit off and the highlights is slightly clipped not to mention the weird lens flare in the top right corner of the picture of the 8 pro which is brilliantly controlled by the 9 pro not just that, it is well controlled in all the light sources of the picture in the 9 Pro. Over here, the saturation is just turned up in the 8 Pro for some reason which I do not like at all. Not just that, over here the shadow details are lacking in the 8 Pro, comparatively the 9 Pro does a better job. And again the same story of the highlight control, the 9 Pro does a better job than the 8 Pro. Here the colors are just off on the 8 Pro, I do not know what was going on. The 9 Pro I felt was very very close to the actual scene. It's not 100% accurate but I would say 90% plus it was accurate because the warm colors on the 8 Pro is just not what was present at that point. Also if you see the details and the sharpness, 9 Pro does a better job of maintaining those. Yeah, I feel the 9 Pro is a way better option over here overall. Next, let's move to selfies. 8 Pro colors are way warmer than it should be. The other thing is that it tries to brighten up the face. It tries to balance out the dynamic range of the rest of the scene, but still the face is just lit up by an artificial source of light, it seems over here, and a bit of sharpening around the edges as well, as you can see certain halos. Now on the 9 Pro, it's a bit underexposed, but seems like the dynamic range is better. If you see my black t-shirt over here, it's cooler than expected. So that's also not capturing the actual colors of the scene. Both are kind of disappointing, but if I had to choose either of the two, I see more details in the 9 Pro. Here's a selfie portrait. I feel the selfie portrait over here, the clear winner is the 9 Pro. 
both the clues in the background the edge detection the skin tone maintenance etc is fine only if i dial up the warmth i think it would be better also if you see the background blur of the tallest building in the background the blur in the 9 pro is better all right here's 4k 30 fps video from both the 8 pro and the 9 pro it's very overcast uh, not a lot of direct sunlight but yeah one thing i would like to say is i mentioned about dol hdr and probably you can see it in effect over here with the 9 pro you see the exposure changing very drastically when i turn to the greens over here on the 8 pro which is not happening on the 9 pro also here's a stabilization test i'm gonna just walk around a bit 4k 30 fps again right yeah i feel the stabilization is completely fine on both of these let me just turn to the ultra wide very quick all right here's the ultra wide from both uh, a bit of a weird color tint on the 8 pro let's go to the telephoto on these flowers all right both of them are not doing really great also i see it's 2x on the 9 pro for some reason probably the telephoto is not there for video recording but all in all i think both are doing a fair enough job over here all right now i have switched on the hdr mode on the 8 pro looks very weird in my opinion but yeah you can see the exposure shifting has reduced again but one restriction on the 8 pro is that you can't switch the lenses which you can do on the 9 pro as you can see here i turn to the ultra wide and then zoom in a bit all right here is 1080p 30 fps footage from the front camera of both of these phones you can see the dynamic range is way better on the 9 pro like there's non-existent sky on the 8 pro unfortunately but uh, yeah i think stabilization wise both are fine and yeah i think the 9 pro just takes this very easily there is no dispute at all um think my face is a bit underexposed maybe but yeah it's definitely better than the sky being completely blown out in the 8 pro so that's been it for my detailed comparison between the oneplus 8 pro and the oneplus 9 pro do let me know down in the comments below if you found it uh, useful or if you have some other further questions so that's been it thank you for watching this video and i'll catch you in the next one